everybody, welcome, it's the Fly for Doctor. So today we're going to be talking about zinc. And if you've been in modern day America, you've heard about zinc being awesome, especially in these days of what's going on with the coronavirus, with boosting our immune system, with doctors or some other health professionals stating that they have solutions for the coronavirus right now and zinc being one of the treatments. I thought it'd be imperative for you to understand why zinc is such an important mineral that everyone is talking about currently. Now zinc is a mineral that is extremely important in a lot of bodily functions that we do every day and that our body does and performs every day even without your knowledge. But it is estimated that about 2 billion people are actually deficient in this very important mineral. Now, unfortunately, our body is unable to store zinc. So you can't eat a bunch of zinc today and hope that tomorrow you will have the remaining to kind of help you go. It doesn't really work like that. Once your body has used the max that it can use or it needs to use, you do excrete the rest of it. Well, now that we know that zinc is extremely important and unfortunately our body cannot store this awesome mineral, what are the benefits and what are the things that the zinc does to our body? So zinc acts as a cofactor for a lot of production of enzymes and enzymes help a lot of bodily processes. And so that means if this very important cofactor, which is zinc, is not present or is not functioning properly, then a lot of bodily functions that we know of will definitely be faulty. Zinc also helps the immune system. And what it does is it helps support T cells. T cells are a branch of the white blood cells that helps us fight off infection and viruses and things like that. And so if the T cells are not working as well as they're supposed to, what could happen is that we could be more prone to infection and things of that nature. In the HIV virus, for instance, the T cells are the cells of the HIV virus, virus specifically attacked. And so a lot of the times, again, we want our immune system to be in tip top shape and we need the zinc to help our T cells specifically as well. Remember, the T cells help to regulate the immune system and help fight cancer cells and infection. Zinc also helps to heal wounds properly. And this is because it helps in the production and manufacturing of collagen. Collagen, as we may know, helps in wound healing, okay? It forms a major building block in skin structure. And so if our collagen is not functioning properly or we can't make it because we're lacking zinc, then ultimately our wound healing abilities will also be reduced. And so zinc helps definitely with wound healing. And this is especially important in people who have diabetes, who have difficulty healing their wound, as well as in athletes. You know, they're running, they're jumping, they're doing a lot of exercises so they could have muscle injury and things of that nature. Zinc has also been known to help with inflammation. And we know if you've watched my other videos, which I will link up here and uh, on the screen, check on the left or on the right, it's probably gonna be up here. You would learn about all of the stuff that helps the, with inflammation, especially foods. Now, as far as minerals and supplements, zinc is definitely one of those that you want to take because it will definitely help with inflammation. Also, zinc helps to fight the common cold. It does inhibit the rhinovirus, which is one of the most common causes of the common cold. But we have other viruses as well that zinc will definitely help with. Now, we've talked about how zinc helps. Well, if someone is lacking in zinc, how will they know? What are some of the signs and symptoms of a deficiency in zinc? You could have heartburn, it'll cause growth retardation, and so in kids and in young people or in pregnant women, a lack of zinc or a deficiency in zinc could actually cause a retardation of the growth of the child or the baby. People who have a deficiency in zinc will actually develop a loss of taste or smell. And now if you think about what's going on right now, one of the main things and one of the main symptoms or signs that we're looking at when patients come positive with coronavirus is a loss of taste and smell. And so that tells us that the patient is probably deficient in zinc and that's why a lot of some of these treatments that they're talking about also has zinc 
as one of the treatment options. Patients who are deficient in zinc will also have a decreased immune system, and that will come up in a case of having more common colds, and they may also have prolonged wound healing times. And so in patients, for instance, who have diabetes, they are on a high carb diet, they could actually be lacking zinc. And so that may be in inclusion to all the other factors that may be causing delay in healing. That may be also a factor that's also causing the prolonged healing time with these wounds. Some patients will actually have prostate issues. Others will come up with major, major depression. Some will come up with ulcers in the mouth and in the GI system. And others will just have generalized inflammation all over the body. Remember we said zinc definitely is an anti-inflammatory. And so a deficiency in that will come up with increased inflammation in the body. Well, we now know all this information. So what are the risk factors of having a zinc deficiency? Well, for one, if you're not eating enough supplements or eating the right foods that will supply you with zinc, then you're going to have a deficiency in zinc. But also, for those people who have chronic and acid use, so people who have heartburn or stomach upset and they just chug and chug tums like no man's business, what's happening is that they're reducing their stomach acid, which is what this is supposed to do because then that will reduce the uh, pain that they're feeling with you know the excess stomach acid. However, if they reduce their stomach acids too much, that could actually affect the absorption of zinc in their stomach or their GI system. And so it's kind of a, you know, a catch 22 where you almost have to find the fine line between excess reduction of stomach acids, which are extremely important and are there for a purpose and the disadvantage of reducing it to a point that you may not be able to absorb a lot of your important minerals. Thank you for sticking with me in part one. In part two, I'm going to talk about the different sources of zinc and also the supplements that you can get of zinc and which one is the best. So stay tuned for that. I will be talking to you then. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Shill. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you do enjoy this content that I'm bringing you. If you have other things that you'd like for me to talk about or maybe any reaction videos or any other thing, leave a comment down below. I'll really appreciate it. Also follow me on my Instagram page. It's the exact same name, The Fly Foot Doctor. Thanks for kicking it with me. I'll see you in the next video.